your hands together, everybody. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. I want to bless God for the music ministry. I want to bless God for the choir. We are starting the year in earnest. And by God's grace, we had a beautiful time on Sunday. And we are doing our word service today. This is a wisdom word service. And the month of January and February, I feel the most important thing to do is to teach us on leadership. Leadership seems to be a very important ingredient and perhaps the missing link between successful people and those that do not succeed. I found out from my little experience on earth that if you don't understand what it means to lead, you will not even, you may not, be, you may not follow a leader and you may miss it in life. Leadership is too important. Perhaps the most important subject today in the business world is leadership. 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 Emotional quotient. People are all intelligence. People are always considering and asking questions about leaders. Who is a leader? How do we lead? How do we lead right? We need leaders. Nations are built by leaders. And nations are ruined by lack of leaders. Companies are built by great leaders. And companies are destroyed by lack of great leaders. Of course, churches are also built by leaders. The church is built by the greatest leader of all. Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And of course, little branches of those churches on earth are also ruined or destroyed by lack of leaders, not preachers. You can have great preachers and have poor leaders. Leadership is more than preaching. Leadership is a spirit. Leadership is something that is within you. It's like, a, the, of course, of all animals in the kingdom, the lion is perceived as the leader in the jungle. The eagle, the leader in the air. The whales, the leader in the ocean. There must be leaders. Of course, man, the leader on earth. We'll be taking our leadership series by looking at the life of one man called David. So the theme of this series is leading like David. Leading like David. Leading like David. Leading like David. We're going to look at David's life the next six weeks. In between those six weeks, we're going to have time for questions and answers. We'll let you know when we will take your questions and answers. We're going to take a closer look at the life of the man called David. Romans 15, my text for today, verse number 4. Romans 15, my favorite verse. Verse number 4, when it comes to why the scriptures was written, tells us whatsoever things were written for time, we are written for our learning. Learning. We need to continue to learn, to study scriptures, Pastor Julius, and pick information that we, through patience and comfort of scriptures, might have hope. So we need to go to scriptures to learn. I don't have to throw 50 scriptures to you today to know some key wisdom principles about leadership. So whenever I look at scriptures and I see what has been written about the life of David, I want to learn. So I'd like to pray right now. Father, we ask that as we open the pages of scriptures to learn about your son, servant, David, the King David, we pray that you open our eyes to keys, to principles, to rules, to laws of leadership that we may become leaders and we may sharpen our leadership skills in Jesus' name. Amen. Some of us have leadership potentials and what we need to do is to sharpen them, to develop them. You know, to develop them, to become better leaders. Of course, in leadership, you make mistakes. You run into crisis. First Corinthians 10, verse 11 again. I'm still building, of course, my text on and around leadership. I'm a student of leadership. Pastor Jenkins, I think I must use the word leadership. Leadership on an average in a day, maybe 15 times in the last five years. Whenever I speak to people, about 10 years ago, God took me through a trip in scriptures, a journey through scriptures on wisdom, 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 wisdom. For the last four or five years, the burden is given to me is leadership, leadership. I found out, Pastor Yika, that what we lack most of the times where we're not indeed moving at a level and at a pace, God expects us to move like a cutting edge, is leadership. Not because we don't have the seed of leadership within us, but we refuse to nurture it, to grow it, to make it blossom and to flourish. We refuse to because of certain things, maybe timidity, 
may be being afraid, lack of faith, or faithlessness. So those things choke the seed of leadership within us. We can do much more than we are doing right now. We can be much more than we are right now. We can drive more things than we are driving right now. But we are afraid of failing. And that alone finds a way of stifling leadership potentials in your life. First Corinthians 10, 11 tells us also like a twin scripture with what was written. Now all these things happened unto them for our examples. And they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world has come. Hebrews 11 verse 32, I like it so very much. When the writer of Hebrews was writing and doling out all the great men that ever lived, he said, what shall I say more? He spoke about Moses, spoke about Abraham, men that God used that walked by faith. He said, what shall I say more? For time will fail me. So I'm not the only person that time fails when I'm preaching on the pulpit. The man even writing says, time will fail me to tell about Gideon, of Barak, of Samson, of Japheth, and of David also. So even in the heroes of faith, men that God used, men that led, men that moved mountains, also Samuel, and of the prophets, of course, you knew Samuel lived before David. No, he wasn't arranging them in order of when they lived or chronology. He said, David, so David entered the name of great men that God used. And he said, what shall I say more? Now, because he couldn't say a lot more, we have time to say a lot more. Put your hands together, everybody. We have time. Praise God. He said, what shall I say more? Well, when the writer of Hebrews stopped, we will continue. Can we go out a table and start looking at scriptures to look at exegesis of scriptures and find out what David did? Like I said, this is a very important part for me because one of the things we must learn is to learn from the successes and the failures of men. I repeat, successes and the failures of those that have gone ahead of us and before us. They will become wiser, will become better. If you don't learn from their failures, you are as much a fool as they were. Because that's why those failures were written. So that we can learn and not make the same, same errors. And if you cannot pick wisdom tools from their successes, so you can replicate them in your life, then you may as well not be a good student. For the reason we teach you is that you may learn and do the things that are right and should be done. Leadership. I'm so burdened. I'm so burdened. I'm so concerned. I've seen marriages ruined because of lack of leadership. I've seen businesses destroyed because of lack of leadership. Leadership. Look at what happened a few months ago in this country. And I say that with a sense of honesty. Answers got out of hand because of lack of leadership. For yay, if I was a leader in this country, that thing would have been nipped on the board several times, several ways. Look at how many people, how many stores were looted. A few days ago, I called somebody I've known for close to 20 years. I said, I want to buy a new generator. One of the small generators at our church. I called him, hello, sir. Say said, yes, sir. I need a generator. How much is it going to cost us? He said, sir, I can't afford to give you a cost. I said, why? He said, my stores, all my stores in Lagos were looted during entrance. I haven't recovered. I'm still praying. I'm still crying. I had to commiserate with him. I was, felt so bad. Good man, great man, good businessman. I knew him 20 years ago when he started and he grew that business from nowhere. He became great. He was supplying us one small generator and he kept supplying another and another. And all of a sudden, everything in one night or one week, boom! Because of lack of leadership. Listen, don't play when it comes to the subject of leadership. You, 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 watch me. If I am you, I will find a leader to follow than follow a nobody. You know what somebody said? Listen, I will never forget what somebody said. A great warrior said this, and it's important. Follow him. Be sure who you are following is a leader. Be very sure who you are following is a leader. It's important for you. Somebody said, I fear, say, I fear not an army of, uh, of, of, of lions led by sheep or a lamb. I fear an army of sheep led by a lion. That's the only thing I fear. I think that was Alexander the Great. I'm not too sure. He said it. That of all things, I go to battle knowing I will win. But when I see an army of sheep led by a lion, I will run. When I see an army of lions led by a lamb or sheep, I will fight. Leadership. Because man understands the place and the power of leadership. 
Today we lack it around us. We see people that don't even have it. Great. Look at what happened in America. I will not go into details. Leadership, leadership, leadership. We can't overemphasize it. There are so many men that have abdicated their leadership roles in marriage. And all of a sudden, we have feminist movements rising everywhere, popping up, trying to fight God's agenda on earth, saying we will create our own agenda. Leadership, leadership is as important as a very existence. If you're not led, then take it from me. You'll be ruined. If you're not led right, it's as important as your very existence. How can you exist without understanding the place of leadership? Leadership. Leadership. Listen, brethren, there was a statement that the leaders made. And this was what prompted me to study the life of David. Many years ago, 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 2 to 10, when David was going to be anointed as king, when he will be anointed, this was what prompted me to start. I mean, I, I read my scriptures. I did one of those giant killers conferences. I was preaching and teaching. And I led that passage and I ran into it. And I paused. Second Samuel chapter 5. 2 Samuel 5, verse number 2. When, when David got to Hebron and David would be made a king in Abu Hebron, the elders came to meet him. And they said, also in time past, the elders came to crown and anoint David king. Listen, Jenkins. They said also in time past. Listen, when Saul Tyro, was king over us, thou was he that led us out. Excuse me? You missed that. Though he was king over us, you were our leader. <laughs> Leadership. He was king. He had the office. He had the position, he had the crown, he had the title, you had the spirit, you had the potential, you had the faith, you had the courage, we followed you, we were behind you, we loved you, we moved with you. He, leadership has nothing to do with office. Leadership has nothing to do with what? Office. Who had the office? Saul. Who led the people? David, who had the crown? Saul. Who led the people? David. <laughs> who had the position? Saul. Who did the people follow? David. Are you with me? He said, when he had the crown, when he was king, when you led us in and out of battles, you were the ones we followed. The king, even God, spoke about you, that you will feed Israel. You will be the captain of the land. The day I saw that scripture, everything changed. Everything I knew about leadership changed. Everything. Because I know there are so many people with the office who are not leading. And there are some who don't have the office and they are doing the word leading. Second Samuel 5 verse 2. Very simple passage. Just read it again. In times past, when Saul was king, not when Saul was killed, when Saul was king, he was in charge. He had a throne. He was king. But who was the leader? David. That was the one that led us out and brought us in Israel. The Lord said to you, you will feed my people Israel and thou shalt be captain. Over. So you can imagine, even the people knew who the leaders are. Don't be deceived. It's not those that carry the title, especially in the church. Somebody else can carry the title of deaconess, like Ola, or pastor, like George, and he's not the leader. The people we know, they know who the leaders are. Because how? Because leadership is defined by the word influence. They knew the people that had influence on their lives. It's not the office, person you got that gives you influence. It's a person. The office gives you authority. Office does not give a man influence. Office simply gives authority. So leadership has nothing to do as it were with office. Office should hate, support, help it. But that's authority. So with authority, you can do much more. Much more. So the king had authority. The king had the crown. The king had the office. The king had the title. The king had the position. We call it in leadership circles, positional leadership. But not always. Not always. Not always work. 
Praise God. In a choir, for instance, you can have somebody else as HOD or HON, but the real leader is there. Someone without a title. Someone says, no, he drives things. He moves things. He shakes things. When it's not around, they say, well, it's not around. Praise God. When it's around, they say, well, we, now we can sing. When it's there, some, some confidence comes from the belly of their followers. Now, a guy is around. That's a real guy. I remember many years ago, I didn't have the office. My pastor called me to the room, said the people came to meet him to say, sir, if you want to have a youth leader in this church, then he was even youth president before I became youth pastor. So there's only one man that has the influence that we all follow. That was the first time he called me to his office ever. Yinka was the one that spoke to him. He said some two or three leaders came to meet him. He was looking for the next youth president and he was saying, who should I make? Sheikh Gumaji just left. Who should I make? He said, they mentioned your name, that you are the one that led them, that leads them. I said, me. Who said that? I said, your people. Talking about, that was how he told me. That was the first time. So leadership has nothing to do with office. People just know that in a church of 5,000, these five people, when they go this way, you find people following after them. When they go that way, you find a crowd following them. You know what Peter said in John chapter 20? He said, I go, 21, I go a fishing. I like that passage so very much. Why are we studying this subject? Because there are many things written for us, for the generation to come. Peter said in John chapter 21, verse 3, I go a fishing. 21, 3, I, not let's go a fishing. I want to go and fish. The people said, we also follow you. <laughs> Praise God. We also follow you. No wonder Jesus picked Peter from the crowd. He knew that this guy has stronger influence on these people. Jesus knew. So he told Peter, Peter said to them, I go fishing. This is what I want to do. And the people said, what? We also go with you. And they went forth. No wonder what high, some highs do, others do. Oh no. No wonder. He didn't say let's go fishing. So sometimes don't blame some of the pastors. Oh, you see their members, Jericho going. The man said, I want to Jericho in my head. Others say we Jericho with you. You know what I'm saying? A pastor speaks in a way. Others say, we want to speak like you speak. Do you think Pastor Kumui told his members, speak like me? No. The man just speak in a way. Others follow the speaking. I teach like this. Others say, want to teach like you teach. Well, they think the anointing is in the way he taught. But he just kept speaking like him. I was speaking like him in those early days too. I said, stop it. Be yourself. Be original. Praise God. You can be so influential. What you do becomes what others do. How you dress becomes how others dress. How you move becomes how others move. How you speak becomes how they move. Everything you do, they want to do like you. Leadership, leadership, leadership. Now to get more of these videos, just click on the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you can get notified once a video is uploaded. Listen to the program. I like it to subscribe. Subscribe and guess what? Subscribe again. Thank you very much. I'll see you there.